Thank you for joining me for a wonderful read aloud. Find a quiet place to listen and get comfortable. Hi, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me for this read aloud. I'm Mrs. Dobos and I'm here to read you a story. The story that I'm reading to you today is called The Invisible Boy. And the author is Trudy Ludwig. And the illustrator is Patrice Barton. This is a, the genre is a realistic fiction, which means it's a made up story, but it could happen in real life. It has real like events, real like characters, and a real like setting. The main character in the story, his name is Brian and he feels invisible. He feels like no one even notices him and doesn't pay any attention to him. The setting, that means that's where the story takes place, is at his school, in his classroom, out on the playground, in the cafeteria. And as you're listening to this story, I want you to think about how Brian feels. And then think about, there's a new uh, kid that joins the school, his name's Justin. I want you to think about how Justin feels. And at the very end, I'll ask you some questions about the story. All right, here we go. The Invisible Boy. Can you see Brian, the Invisible Boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophia. Nathan has problems what with, with what Mrs. Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first, then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everyone did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings, space aliens locked in intergalactic battles, greedy pirates digging for treasure, and superheroes with the power to make friends to wherever they go. There's Brian's drawings. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student, to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. Mm, they haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Bulgogi is Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat boogergi. And the kids laugh, all of them. That is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian. At 
morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he asks before taking off. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Mrs. Carlotti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio, let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Mrs. Carlotti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think would live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. The Crooked Story We Made Up on the Spot. So there's not a lot of words on this page. It just is a picture of them. Looks like working on their story. Looks like they're sharing their story here. It's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, she hears someone shout. Hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and see Ju sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. Cookie, thanks. I really enjoy the story, The Invisible Boy. Justin was the new kid at town, in town and he was being made fun of, but Brian did something to make him feel a little better. Do you remember what he did? Yeah, even though he was being laughed at about his lunch, Brian wrote him a note and that made Justin feel a little bit better. And Justin felt invisible he felt like he was never included in activities. Nobody ever called on him to be on teams. He wasn't invited to the birthday parties. He sat by himself at lunch. But what did Justin do to make Brian feel better? Yeah, he invited him to join the group with him and Emilio. They got to, to work together in class. So my question for you is a couple questions, but one is, which do you think is worse? Do you think it's worse to be laughed at or to feel invisible? And why do you think that? And then another question I have for you is, have you ever felt like you were invisible? Have you ever felt like you weren't included in a game or activity? And if so, how did that make you feel? I hope you enjoyed the story, The Invisible Boy. Thank you for joining me today.